At 3.30 a.m. and a darkened rain, the wind abruptly shifted and dropped from 30 knots to 6. Because the seas were still confused from the previous day and not having enough sail area, the boat began to turn sideways to the waves, so we had to put more sails out to get the boat moving again. During this sluggish chaos of jibing, the boat lacked enough momentum to push through these large waves, and so to make it quicker, we sometimes use our electric motor with 2 to 3 second burst, just enough to help rotate the boat past the waves and in the right direction. But this time, it was unresponsive. It wasn't a critical situation since we can use our sails to do the same thing, but frustrating nonetheless. Winds have definitely lightened up quite a bit since yesterday. Um, we're just drifting along at about four and a half, five knots, which is the same little bit of head sail out that we've had out for the last few days. Um, but the sun's starting to rise, so we'll probably get ready and uh, wake up Kika and put some more sail out, start uh, heading in the right direction again. It's been a pretty comfortable night though been a nice break from the uh, 30, 35 knots of wind we've been having for the past little while. I don't know if you noticed, but it seems like adjusting our sails is basically a daily morning routine <laughs> during this passage. Everything that needs to happen, whether it's unreefing or reefing or jibing, but the wind died down and the waves are considerably calmer as well. We do have one small hiccup though. Remember that wave yesterday that crashed into that cockpit? Well, it seems like it did some damages to some of the electronics in the cockpit including the motor switch for the electric motor so this is something we'll have to fix <laughs> before we get to land uh we noticed two things one our compass light started flickering which means there's like some wires in there that are shorting out when we went to jibe we we're going to use the motor to kind of spin the boat around and the motor didn't work so my guess is it's probably our forward reverse switch right here because it's exposed in the cockpit and we've had issues with it before um, but before we get too close to land, we should probably get our motor back up and running. So today I'm going to try to fix that. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is plug in our motor controller. Um, this computer, I can program everything in the motor controller and see all the status of everything. So if I can plug this in, it should tell me if the switch is even activated or not. Problem is, is that I need to plug it in. All right. Uh, monitor. Battery voltage is good, capacity is good, heat sink temp is good. Forward input on, reverse on. Yeah, it's giving the input of forward and reverse on at the same time, which means this switch is shorted out. So I need to pull that switch apart. We've had issues with this switch before. Um, it's technically a waterproof switch, but on a boat, nothing's truly waterproof, so. Well, the switch itself actually looks fine, so I'm gonna put it back together and start moving down in the process. Yeah, the internals of the switch look just fine. Um, so I'm gonna take the compass off and see if there's like something shorting down inside of it in the actual wire. Yeah, the compass light just turned back on again. Uh, the fact that it's shorting out as well means that something's shorting out in here, I think. That wire looks fine. I don't see any like 
shorts or chafing or Well, it's definitely the switch because I cut the switch out um, and now I just have the bare wires and if I, you know, force them forward, we get forward and if I force in reverse, we get reverse. So, now, um, the problem is I don't have a switch to replace this with. Uh, I built this, I think, when we were in Columbia, so I kind of just used random stuff I found at a hardware store. I'm going to try to rebuild this switch so it can work. Uh, but we definitely need a better solution out here, something more waterproof and more um, outdoor marine rated because this is just like a switch from a car. So it's not the ideal solution, but at least I know it is the switch. Um, worst case, I can probably make something to work forward and reverse or maybe we just have forward to dock or something, but I'm going to try to rebuild this switch and um, rewire it and hopefully that'll work. So this and this thing. Part of the problem is that this switch isn't like a marine grade switch at all. It was just from a normal hardware store in Columbia. And I, and I didn't have any heat shrink um, connectors for the back of it. So I soldered the wires on and then covered it in a whole bunch of glue, hopefully hoping it would keep the water out for a while. And it did, I mean, this switch is two years old, so it definitely did work, but um, I think it's about time to replace it with the proper thing. So when we get to the UK, I'll probably order uh, like an actual waterproof switch to keep out here in the cockpit. I tested the switch and it seems like it's functioning just fine. So I'm just going to unsolder the wires that were on the back of it. And now that I have the proper connectors, um, I'll just wire it up the right way and uh, it should work after that. Squeaky. <laughs> yeah, right? I still don't have the proper heat shrink connectors, but um, I think this switch is, this repair is kind of gonna only be temporary. But I did fill the connectors with dielectric grease um, and I am gonna slide some heat shrink tubing down over the top of them and then spray them with Corrosion X. So it should be a lot better than before and before it lasted two years. So I think it'll be all right. So now I'm just going to heat shrink this up and then spray it down with some Purge next. Reverse is so much louder. <laughs> Well, we don't talk about our electric motor much just because it just works. It's super simple. Uh, it works when we need it to. There's no fuss and we've never really had to do any maintenance on it. So when something like this switch breaks, um, it's the only thing in four years that's actually given us issues is that little switch or the, the old key switch that we had out in the cockpit. Um, both times when a wave came into the cockpit, uh, they shorted out and kind of caused us trouble. But that's not really an electric motor thing, that's just not using the right switch. But yeah, overall it just works all the time. We never have to maintain it. We've done a few upgrades in the past to make it better and, and more efficient, but overall it just works when we need it to work. So there's not much to talk about. I'm glad that this time the repair was also really straightforward. It was just the forward reverse switch was kind of shorting out or something like that. Um, and it was really easy to fix. So that should hold us for another couple of years. <laughs>
I'm really glad we have a gimbal stove. Oh my gosh. Ridiculous. <laughs> oh. Yummy. Thanks for dinner. You're welcome. What is this? Spinach, pierogies, pierogies and bacon, and avocados. And avocado. So it's pierogies and bacon, but like to balance out that unhealthy, we have avocados and spinach. <laughs> it's all about balance. Yeah. But yeah, we got our wind shift this morning. It died down from like 30, 35. It's now blowing like 20, maybe gusting at 25, mm -hmm. which is a lot, a lot more comfortable. Mm -hmm. We had yeah. a drive this morning uh, at first light in the rain, just, just like it said it was going to, just like we predicted yesterday. Hopefully the waves are going to calm down a little bit and organize themselves tonight. Um, yeah, it, it definitely rolling. calmed down. They're just, yeah. they're just coming from multiple directions because of that wind shift. Mm -hmm. The days, I feel like the days are going faster. I think they are too. You no. Know? We're, I don't know about you, but I feel like I'm less exhausted all the time. Like when we first started out, all I could do was sleep. And then yeah. I could only wake up to like cook and jive. <laughs> that was it. And we were doing like these short little three, four hour shifts. But now it's, it's kind of more regular. Like one of us will be asleep for six or seven hours and then wake up, stay awake with each other for an hour or two. Mm -hmm. And then, and then the other better. one falls asleep for like six or seven hours. I know it feels like we're eating a lot because I feel like we're always, we <laughs> always have something in our hands eating. It's the only time we're both awake. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to finish our dinner and our ab workout. Right. <laughs> and then uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Cheers. Can't reach the camera. You want to hold this? I got it. Cheers, guys. See you tomorrow.